Hey folks, welcome to TK Action's V5 quick tip number five. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the dodge and burn buttons in the V5 panel and how to combine them with luminosity selections to do a technique developed by Tony Kuiper that he calls luminosity painting. This tip, as with most of my quick tips, is demonstrated in more detail in my complete guide to luminosity mass course, which can be found at the link in the description below. That course uses an older version of the panel, so my YouTube tips briefly show you how to accomplish the same good stuff using the V5 panel. A time-honored method of non-destructively lightening or darkening areas of an image is to paint on either a 50% gray layer or a transparent layer, which is set to either soft light or overlay blending mode, and you paint with white to lighten or black to darken. I used to set up these layers by hand, but the V5 panel has dodge and burn buttons that create them for you with a single click. Clicking on the buttons creates transparent layers. The dodge button creates a transparent layer set to the overlay blending mode, and it also selects the paintbrush and sets the paintbrush color to white. The burn tool creates a transparent layer set to the soft light blending mode, and it selects the paintbrush tool and sets the paintbrush color to black. If you hold down Alt or Option and click on these buttons, instead of a transparent layer, you get a 50% gray layer. Transparent layers and 50% gray layers work almost the same. The advantage of a 50% gray layer is that it's easier to see where you have done your burning or your dodging because it's very easy to see that on the thumbnail in the layers panel. Transparent layers have another advantage that I'll show you in a minute. Freehand dodging and burning is a great way to lighten and darken areas of your image, and it's really easy to do. For example, if I want to burn, I'll make sure I'm on the burn layer, select a black paintbrush, and in this case, I'll set the opacity of the brush to about 30% and make sure it's fairly large and soft. And if I want to burn the sky, just to darken the sky a bit because I felt like it was too bright, it's that easy. And if I want to create kind of a custom hand-painted vignette. It's really easy to do that also just by painting around the edges of the image. For freehand dodging, I would select the dodge layer, select a white brush, and now if I want to lighten areas of the image, like make it look like I have some spotlighting or bring out the spotlighting that's already here in the foreground of this image, I could just click in various areas and paint in some of that lightning into the foreground. And here's the real advantage of using a transparent layer. You can hold down the control or command key and click on your dodge or burn layer and it will load that as a selection. It'll load your dodging or burning as a selection. And once it's loaded as a selection, if you create a new adjustment layer, in this case levels, but it could be any kind of adjustment layer, that will attach the mask that is exactly what you dodged or burned to that layer. So now when we make adjustments, I can fine tune my dodging and burning with other adjustments and get it just looking exactly how I want. So freehand dodging and burning like that is a great technique and it works beautifully in a lot of cases. But sometimes you want to be more precise or you want to target lightening and darkening to certain tones and you don't want your painting to go outside the lines or you don't want to see the edges of where you dodged or burned. So in this case, we combine dodging and burning with luminosity selections and this forms the basis of the technique called luminosity painting. You can luminosity paint with any luminosity selection made from any of the luminosity mask buttons in the rapid mask panel or the intro panel. I'm going to start by just setting the composite channel as the luminosity lock and then I could look at different masks to see if there's one that I think is going to target the area that I want to dodge or burn but I, a lot of times, I know where in the image I want to dodge or burn, but I don't know what the tone is. So this is where the pick tool or the pick button is really helpful. For example, if I want to burn this area of the dark area of the clouds a little bit, but I don't want to continue to darken the, my highlights, uh, I can pick a tone that's here in those darker areas and say OK, and the pick tool will find the mask that targets those areas and protects those highlights. And if I feel like I didn't quite get it right, I can always pick again, maybe go a little bit darker and say OK. Yeah, and then I can also, of course, use the modify buttons to further modify that mask to really get it where I want it. 
And when I say OK, now I want to burn with that mask. But actually, I don't want the mask. I want a selection. So at this point, I'm going to click the Select button to load that mask as a selection. I'm going to click this button to hide the marching ants. There's still a selection there, but I just hid the ants so they don't bother us. Now I can go to my burn layer and select a black brush. And now I can paint. And my painting is going to be restricted to those darker areas of clouds. So I can create some more dimension in the clouds and the sky, but I'm not over darkening my highlights. So that's a great way to do that. And that's luminosity painting. I'm going to uh, deselect that selection. Now let's say I want to do some contouring or sculpting of the rocks in the foreground here. Now I could try to go in and hand, dodge and burn, darken the, the shadows and lighten the highlights, but that's tricky and if I go outside the lines it's pretty apparent. But if I want to do it with luminosity painting technique, I could start by again using my pick tool to go in and pick one of the darker areas down here in the rocks and that looks like a great selection. I don't think I need to modify that. I'm just going to load it as a selection and now I can hide those ants and I'm on my burn layer and I can go in and out and burn but I'm only burning the darker areas of the rocks and creating more dimension that way but without also darkening my lights. Now I can deselect that and now I want to dodge these uh, lighter areas of rock to continue that sculpting or increasing the 3D look that you get from variable lighting. So I'm going to use the pick tool again. I'm going to pick uh, one of these lighter areas of the rock here, maybe in here uh, or maybe even in here, one of these highlight sides and say OK. That looks pretty good, although I think I am going to modify that or infinitize a little bit. Uh, actually, I don't like that one, so I'm going to cancel out of that. I'm going to pick again. I didn't quite get the right tone. I want that tone in there, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. But I am going to modify it. So darken the shadows, bring up the highlights a little bit so there's a little better contrast separation. Now I'm going to load that as a selection, and I'm going to go to my dodge layer and select a white brush, and now I can come in and paint, and my painting even with that big brush is going to be constrained to the lighter portions of the rock and the seaweed and it's going to create that sculpting or contouring that I'm going for. So you can see that this luminosity painting technique combining dodging and burning with luminosity selections is really powerful and really lets you target tonal adjustments very specifically in your image. So thanks for joining me for another TK Actions V5 quick tip. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.